Danny from the Famicast here, and you're watching a Famicast video review of Snowboarding the Next Phase on the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to be perfectly honest. When it comes to snowboarding games, I'm kind of a snob. And for me, things just don't get any better than the original 1080 snowboarding on the N64. The awesome physics, challenging gameplay, and overall polish just made it not only one of my favorite sports titles on the system, but one of my favorite games of all time. And since that game, I haven't really given any other snowboarding game a fair shake. Well, enter snowboarding the next phase on the Switch. The developer Session Games, they're responsible for a number of mobile games, including Red Bull Free Skiing, Red Bull Air Race, and the precursor to the next phase, snowboarding the fourth phase. Now, don't let the mobile background scare you. The development team was founded by a group of guys who were responsible for the likes of the original SSX Trilogy, Skate, and these guys even have experience in the snowboarding and skating scenes. Now, regardless of how you feel about these guys' experience or any of that type of stuff, I mean, if you're looking for a snowboarding game on the Switch, this is pretty much your only option. For me, it just seemed like just as good of a time as any just to give a game like this a shot. Now, right off the bat, it's important to know that the next phase isn't a simulation title, but it's rather an arcadey trick attack snowboarding game. The game features a career mode, two player split screen multiplayer, an arcade mode, and all sorts of various options to customize your border and your base camp. The arcade mode is players trying to complete missions to nab high scores and to continue on to different courses. Missions challenge players to perform a certain amount of tricks before reaching the finish line. For example, perform a 540 grab three times, collect eight geo tags or scout out throughout the level, stuff like that. Now, in an odd twist, if you overperform a trick, you won't clear the mission. And this is the same in both arcade and career mode. So let's say you're going up to do, like I said, that 540 grab, but you accidentally turn it into a 720. You won't clear that particular mission. Now, without some kind of an understanding of this, missions sometimes can get a little annoying. Now, even going into the courses with this understanding, it's still likely to get on your nerves just a little bit. Now, back to the arcade mode. You have three chances in the form of tickets to clear one mission per run. If you fail to clear the mission three times, you're done. This mode is fun and challenging, but the inclusion of an online leaderboard system would have been a nice way to keep gamers coming back. Otherwise, you're kind of just competing with high scores of yourself. The career mode offers numerous locations, including the likes of British Columbia, Japan, Russia, and a lot more. Each of these locations contain three or more courses, as well as hundreds of missions to clear for further unlocks. Missions are locked behind a metal system made up of bronze, silver, and gold level challenges. There are three missions per course per metal. In other words, there are nine missions per course with increasing difficulty depending on what level you're tackling. Clearing missions nabby various boards, clothing, and vehicles. The boards and clothing are purely cosmetic, however, the vehicles play a role in enabling you to access certain courses. For example, if you don't have a specific snowmobile, you won't be able to get to X level or something like that. It sounds a little annoying, but honestly, I've only ran into these vehicle restrictions a couple of times, and even when I did, I just found where I can get the required vehicle, which usually isn't too far away in terms of missions, and cleared that and pushed on. Boom. There is a leveling system that introduces a point modifier. Now, this determines the amount of points that you're going to get when you land tricks. If you get a perfect stomp, then you'll get max points for the trick. Now, using this modifier, the game also suggests that you go into each course with a certain modifier level or higher. It's possible to tackle high-level courses and missions with a lower-than-suggested modifier, but you're probably going to have a little bit of a hard time getting past them. Overall, there's quite a lot to do here in the career mode with courses, gear, and a decent amount of vehicles to unlock. And this is definitely where you're going to be spending the majority of your time with the next phase. The controls here are pretty easy to get the hang of. You can tuck and jump with B, do grabs in the air with A, change your grab style with the L button, and you can perform spins and flips with the joystick. Now pressing left on the D-pad will snap a quick photo, and down will change the camera angle. Like I mentioned before, landing tricks perfectly will net you more points, which is super important when trying to get high scores in the career mode. And the game's pretty forgiving when it comes to sticking landings here too. As long as your board is facing the ground, you're pretty much guaranteed to stick the landing. While the controls work here pretty well, there are some aspects of the gameplay that did feel a little bit off, kind of weird to me. And when entering really tight areas on the course, kind of like what you're seeing right now, you don't always have direct control over your character, like you can't go left or right here. In areas like these, the game will kind of guide your character to ensure they don't slam into obstacles in these tight areas. It's a little strange, but maybe it's a way to prevent people from getting frustrated from smashing into walls or just missing jumps or something like that, I'm not sure. Now, the first thing to really draw me to the next phase were the graphics. The character models and courses all sport a cel-shaded look. 
The levels are also modeled after real-world locations. Although the levels are a bit small and sometimes feel a little bit claustrophobic, they're pretty convincing and varied. As you shred down the mountain, snow kicks up behind the border, all we're running at a pretty smooth frame rate. I mean, upon closer inspection, I mean getting up really close to things on the track at, by stopping, environments are kind of low poly. Given the fact that the majority of your time will be spent doing tricks and speeding down these mountains, this is probably going to go unnoticed by most. The music here is also pretty well done, containing mostly of hip-hop and dubstep mixes that fit the aesthetic pretty well here. As snowboarding in the next phase is a nice addition to the Nintendo Switch small library of sports titles. The game looks fantastic, it's easy to control, and it was surprisingly enjoyable. I don't want the team's background in mobile games or the fact that this game isn't 1080 scare you away. Besides a few gripes with the mission parameters and hand holding in tight spots, the next phase isn't without flaws, but it does remain a super fun and affordable game that'll help scratch that snowboarding itch that you've been waiting for on your Switch. I know what you're thinking. How about the multiplayer? Well, sorry, I didn't have a chance to test this out with anybody. With local only, it makes it kind of hard to play this, so sorry about that. Regardless, final score for snowboarding the next phase on the Nintendo Switch, 7.5 out of 10. Keep it locked here to the Famicast for more reviews, podcasts, special videos, and a whole lot more straight out of Japan. If you like what you've seen here, mash that like button and please consider subscribing. Again, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.